just have a listen to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, that's our tiger. Um, we all obviously always drive it rather carefully around our track here. We don't um, put it up to its full limit. Um, but just out of interest, 28 miles an hour for a Sherman. The tiger's only a couple of miles an hour slower. So, um, do remember it's actually a very, very mobile vehicle. Um, and don't believe all the normal stuff we say too so too heavy. Now, coming on now is. What the Germans built after the war, this is the famous Leopard tank. They start designing it, the Bundeswehr is reconstructed in 1955. They um, start the design process for building a tank. And this is what comes out in 1965, the Leopard 1. Um, they start by calling it the Standard Panzer. And really interestingly, the Germans decided different things and what we decided after World War II. They thought that speed, in other words mobility, um, was going to be more important than armour protection. So they gave it that great gun, that's the British 105mm gun on it. They gave it an MTU diesel engine, which you can hear it rumbling away, very powerful, made the tank very fast and speedy, and then they um, don't worry too much about armour because they think speed will be protection in itself. The quicker you are on the battlefield, the less chance you're going to have of the enemy knocking you out. Now in Britain after the war, we went the other way. We decided that we wanted firepower first, armour protection second, and mobility last on the list. Hence we ended up with Chieftain and then Challenger. Now all the tanks, they've changed slightly in the sense of being able to uh, be upgraded. So the Leopard tank, um, they've added more armour, even on this version, which was actually um, made for the Canadian Army. 
you can see extra armor has been added to the turret and then later there was actually a second version of the Leopard, Leopard 2, a very different tank but again they build on that mobility power the tank's got um, and you can see that a very successful vehicle um, lots of countries around the world have actually got the Leopard in service and um, very interestingly for all concerned as well um, my betting is there's going to be a Euro Leopard sometime in the future to replace all the different armies that gave up their tanks like the Canadians who very kindly gave us this tank and then uh, decided they needed them back into service so tanks the story is certainly not over but there's a nice example of how um, things that were learnt and things that weren't learnt or understood differently by different nations after the Second World War. Now what we're going to do for you now ladies and gentlemen, a bit of a photo opportunity there with the vehicles, then in a few moments time we're going to run those vehicles off of the arena, um, starting with the British tanks that are lined up there, we're going to move them up into our workshop area so again they'll be heading out the arena up past where that whopping sign on the side of the building is vehicle conservation center and uh, move forward and then we'll let you know the tiger will then after that be following on to right drive up that road turn left and drive back down the side road of the museum to enter the museum at the far end so if you'd like to maneuver yourself to go and have a look at that you can get some nice photographs of it be a bit closer to it as it drives up the road but again could I please just say um, do watch it in the sense of um, keeping behind the barriers and listening out for any guidance from the marshals so as I said earlier plenty of other activities on around the museum we'll be clearing the arena fairly shortly um, but do engage do make the most of the opportunity and, uh, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day here at Bovington and could I um, just a quick notice and uh, Mr Ross um, could they please return to the main restaurant as soon as possible? That's at the front of the museum. That's a Mr. Ross. Could he return uh, to the front of the museum ASAP? Thank you.